Hello, this is Jason Clement, Technical Sales Manager at Isonus, and welcome to this Peer Access Certification Training Module. This module is bit masking and peer access. Our prerequisites are a basic understanding of card formats. Google HID Understanding Card Data Formats. One of the top results will be a PDF from HID reviewing the basics of the Wiegand format and how to break down the bits that are sent from the proximity reader. Our objectives are Understand how to test cards in peer access to achieve the proper bit mask. Setting the bit mask and programming of cards. And finally, what to do when the standard bit masks do not work. So what is bit masking? Bit masking within Isonus is pointing our product to where the card number is within the Wiegand string that we read. When a card is read, there is more data than just the card number, facility code, parity bits, etc. For example, we look at this 26-bit Wiegand format. It has parity bits at the front and the back, and then it has a facility code, and then finally the card code. This is the hot stamp number that's on the card. The facility code is not used directly in the system, but is stored in the raw card data. For those accustomed to other access control platforms, Isonus does not directly use the facility code. There is no configuration in our software where you will enter a facility code. This does not mean that two people with the same card number but different facility codes will gain access. Bid masking is needed whenever the credentials are not formatted in the Isonus format and the end user wants to type in the hot stamp card number. You can always enroll cards manually via a reader no matter what the bit mask is, as it links the raw card data to the badge. This is what we call the hot stamp number on the card. For example, this is most likely a 37-bit card as we have a very long card number. This is the number that we would enter into the software if we had the proper bit mask set within Isonas. Let's jump into Pure Access and see how we configure this. Let's take a look at our tenant. All the credentials that we've enrolled so far are Isonas credentials, meaning that we don't have to worry about the bit masking. Let's say this customer goes out and purchases some of their own cards. So they've used up all the Isonas cards they purchased, and they decided they would save a few dollars by just purchasing some HID cards somewhere online. The first thing we want to do is try to figure out what the bit mask is for these cards. And we're going to do that underneath settings. and then credential. We're going to choose an access point that we're going to read these credentials at. I'll choose the employee entry because that's the nearest reader controller to me. And we'll just simply take one of these cards and read it. Last, we'll hit the calculate button. This will take the last card reject in the system and calculate badge IDs based off the pre-configured bit masks in our system. This card is card number 25002, so it matches up with the 26 bit mask. In the real world, you'd want to get a couple different cards with varying badge IDs and test them all just to make sure that they're all a 26 bit mask especially when you're taking over an existing system. Sometimes the customer has accumulated various card types and various bit masks over the years, in which case you'll want to contact pre-sales support on how best to handle that for taking over the system. So let's say we tested a couple cards and we confirm that it's a 26-bit bit mask. We'll go over here and set it to a 26-bit bit mask. And then we'll click Save Changes. Now it's going to give us a warning. Changing the credential settings may cause all existing credentials to be rejected. Enter your password to confirm saving your changes. This is fine. Our credentials that we've enrolled so far are all Isonus credentials. We do not need to worry about a bit mask when using Isonus credentials. It will automatically recognize if it's an Isonus credential. It will also automatically recognize if it's a pure mobile credential. So in those two cases, we never change the bit mask. We can change the bit mask here because we have HID cards, we have Isonus cards, and then we have pure mobile credentials as well underneath this tenant. So it's only going to apply the bit mask when it sees an HID card read. So this is fine, we can go ahead and change this. In the real world, you'd want to confirm that you don't have any other cards that are using bit masks in the system, otherwise you could potentially break that system.
Now that we've set the bit mask, it's pushed that setting out to all the devices that are currently connected to the system. If I add another device to the system later on, I'll need to set that bit mask on that device. You can either email support and have them do it to the back end, or you can just do it by simply changing the bit mask to something else and then changing it back to the bit mask that it originally was, just so you can get the save changes button to pop up. This will resend out the bit mask so that any new devices will receive that configuration. Now that we've got the bit mask set, we can utilize the badge ID that's hot stamped on the card. So we'll go and take a look at our users. And we'll go ahead and we'll add a new user in real quick. We'll add in Tom Baker here. We'll assign a picture. Upload this. Not going to receive alerts. We can put in a license plate. No web access, but we are going to sign a credential. Now instead of enrolling the credential from the reader controller from an access point, we're just going to go ahead and type the badge ID in. Because we set the bit mask, it will recognize this badge ID for this card. If it was an Isonus credential, you could just type the badge ID in as well. Go ahead and add this in. And we'll say that Tom is part of the office employee group. Save changes. Earlier in the module, we talked about how we do not use facility codes. So if I just enter in card 25002, how does it know that that's the actual correct card? In this case, this is the only time we will actually look at the cot stamp ID on the actual card itself. Once it sees the first card read of 25002, it'll take all the bits on the card, create a GUID off of them, and then it will use that GUID from there on out. And now we can see Tom has 100% everything completed, and we've made changes, so we need to update access points. Now we'll go ahead and test Tom's card. I got a valid admit. We'll go ahead and take a look on our dashboard here and we can see Tom Baker was approved. Now let's see what happens when we change that bit mask to something else. So we'll go back to our settings, go underneath credential, and we'll say we'll change it to a 37-bit bit mask. We'll confirm changes. And we'll go back to our dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and read the exact same credential and we'll see that it's going to give us a card reject. And we see system admin declined no badge. It's the exact same badge but because I changed the bit mask now that credential doesn't work. However, I read Jan's card. His card works fine because it's an Isonus credential so it doesn't matter. Also I'll go ahead and test the mobile app. The mobile app works fine as well because it doesn't rely on bit masking either. So we'll go back to our settings and don't worry we haven't totally broken everything. We can just go ahead and set it back to its 26 bit bit mask. Say yes. Go ahead and put our password in here. Now we'll go back to the dashboard. We'll test that exact same card again. And we can see that Tom Baker was now approved. Bit masking should be one of the first things that you do in the system after adding in your access points and before adding users. Let's go ahead and look at two other scenarios. I'm going to go under settings again and under credential. I've got two other cards that I'm going to go ahead and test in the system. Looking at this card, it has a hot stamp number of 300 on it. I'll read it at our employee entry and I'll go ahead and click calculate. Now we can see that none of the badge IDs match up, in which case we're going to have to try to come up with a custom bit mask. This can be done by opening a ticket through support and they can look at the raw data and we can come up with a custom bit mask. 
And let me show you the other scenario that we might run into. I'll go ahead and read a different card. This card has a hot stamp number of 30001. I can see that it shows up as a 26-bit, as a 26-bit with facility code, a 37-bit, and a corporate 1000. Which one am I supposed to choose? Again, in this case, you'll want to open up a support ticket so we can take a look at the raw data on the card and figure out which bit mask is the actual bit mask. Because while it may work for some cards, say, for example, this may be a 37-bit. If I choose 26-bit, it may work for some cards, and then another batch of cards, it may not work because it has a different number range, and it's reading the credential a little bit differently, coming up with a different badge ID. In those two scenarios, just go ahead and open up a ticket with support, and we'll be more than happy to help you figure out what the actual bit mask is. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it was beneficial. Have a fantastic day.